Hey everyone, Jan here. Today I'm excited to show you my latest creation. I call this six leg walking mechanism the ATTE Walker. I built it from scratch from these awesome and phantom modular parts. Please feel invited me presenting you how I got there. The designation ATTE Walker comes from the Star Wars movie Clone Wars. In this movie ATTE is the short form of All Terran Tactical Enforcer. It is meant to transport 20 clone troopers to the battlefield and is said to be 22 meters long, almost 10 meters in height and runs up to 60 km per hour, even vertically thanks to its magnetic feet. It is mainly armed with a big mass driver turret at the top. Now, I have to admit, I am not particularly an expert for Star Wars, but I enjoy building with LEGO Technic almost just as much as I do with Infanto. And as you can see, LEGO Technic can be an endless source of inspiration for fancy mechanisms. What inspired me was an ATTE walking mechanism made from LEGO that I saw on the YouTube channel of JK Brickworks. This one is driven by a single motor. This didn't look too complicated, so I felt challenged to carry over this working principle to the Infanto system, just in a bigger scale. There is a principal shaft that drives two cranks with 180 degree offset. One for each side. On the LEGO model, this crank has a radius of only one single LEGO stud, which is equivalent to 8 mm. I decided to use an Infanto crank with 80 mm. And as this led to a 10 to 1 scale, I had to build anything else also in 10 to 1 scale. Sounds easy, and I expected it wouldn't take longer than one Sunday afternoon. But it didn't turn out to be that easy. This project is a classic example of some crucial differences between LEGO and Infanto. The most common way to build a hinge with LEGO Technic is to use two lift arms side by side and a connector pack. Such a hinge can pivot by 360 degrees and can do endless rotations. With Infanto instead, the classic hinge is made from a U-block and an M8 bearing block. Such a hinge is very durable, but however it is limited to some 220 degrees. A LEGO lift arm has the holes on its center line. On the ends of an Infanto profile, this is also possible, but nowhere else you need to bolt on a bearing block, which means the hinge point is some 40, 50 or even 56 mm offset from the center line. This can be a serious issue for many kinematic builds that require levers. This Piaggio MP3 style tricycle scooter with a pendulum front axle may serve as example. There is often a way to build around this limitation and the previous one, but often with a sacrifice in stiffness and compactness. If you own just a single Lego Technic set for some 30 euros, you are likely to own a bigger quantity and variety of LEGO parts than Infanto parts, even if you own one big Legion kit or two. For the ATTE Walker, I needed not less than 22 bearing blocks. The 
the Infanta Walker is not only 10 times bigger, but more than 400 times heavier than its LEGO counterpiece. The LEGO Walker has friction and a lot of backlash in its joints, but this doesn't matter, as there is almost no load to carry. On the Infanta Walker, it does matter and I had to make sure to use side-by-side -side hinges only where they were inevitable. Can you see that the foot of the LEGO ATTE Walker is sliding a bit over the desk surface? No problem for the LEGO Walker, but a big problem for the Infanta Walker. When I finished my first build that copied exactly the dimensions of the LEGO Walker, I noticed the step length of the center legs was not identical to the step length of the front and rear legs. The Walker yawed around the vertical axis at each step. The bearings and the motor had a hard time from all the friction when the feet were forced to smear over the ground, especially with my 7 year old daughter sitting on the ATT. The friction was too high. So I had to make some greater adjustments to almost any profile until I got it working properly. So let's put the LEGO model aside and have a look what actually drives the ATTE Walker. For this purpose, I remove the seat pads and lay the ATTE onto its left side. As mentioned earlier, there is a main shaft. This main shaft is driven by a standard Infento motor and the standard 24 volt battery. In between, there is a set of black gears and a white casing that contains a DIY warm gear that I presented in a previous video. Now a warm gear has a lot of friction, but it has two useful advantages for this project. It offers a big reduction ratio of 1 to 26 in a very compact space and secondly, it is self-locking. This means it cannot be driven by the output shaft. When the crank passes the bottom dead center, the crank is pushed up by gravity. With a conventional belt or gear drive, gravity would cause the walker to drop quickly after the crank has passed the bottom dead center. This would look quite limp. By contrast, the warm gear lowers the walker gently again. This way of walking looks more appropriate, doesn't it? I have added this set of black gears between the e-pulse motor and the white warm gear housing later on. The walker was a bit too slow at first, so I decided to speed it up again with a 2 to 1 gear ratio with 3 printed gears I had laying around. I have covered these surprisingly durable gears in a separate video as well. So let's take a look at the actual walking mechanism. It is not as complicated as it may appear at first sight. For a demonstration of the function, I have placed the ATTE walker onto supports. The crank on each end of the main shaft transfers its circular motion onto the center legs. The center foot goes not only back and forth, but also up and down. This lifts the ATTE walker up on one side and gives the front and the rear feet the opportunity to move forward. The front and the rear legs are linked to each other and they act like a parallelogram. They only move back and forth and they go in the opposite direction as the center leg. Since the three feet on the left hand side of the ADTE are at any time in the opposite phase as the feet on the right hand side, there are always three feet on the ground, while three others are in the air to move forward. Like this, the ATTE has always a safe stand as it always stands on three feet. Normally you can control the e-pulse motor with the Infanto motorbike style throttle grip and that's quite okay. For going into reverse direction, you have to push a separate button first. 
But since I built the forklift, I was dreaming about an intuitive joystick control for the ePulse motor where some kind of mechanic or electronic gadget would automatically operate the reverse contact when the joystick is pulled backwards. Normally the ePulse motor is controlled by an analog voltage that comes from a hull sensor inside the ePulse throttle grip. I determined the limits of this voltage with a voltmeter. This was between 0.8 and 3.5 volts. Furthermore, I figured out which connection had to be shortened to switch the ePulse into a reverse. This is an Arduino Nano microprocessor. It is a small kind of computer that costs around 6 euros. It is as large as my thumb. It operates with 16 MHz and 128 KB memory. This is similar to what operates most of your home appliances, like your TV remote control or your coffee machine. The program for an Arduino is called Sketch. The sketch is written in the programming language C on a computer. And after compiling this sketch, it can be uploaded to the Arduino by a USB cable. So I took one Arduino Nano and a 12-bit digital to analog converter breakout board. And a joystick of course, this all didn't cost more than 20 euros. My digital to analog converter is supposed to supply this same analog voltage as the previous throttle grip. My sketch on the Arduino Nano tells him how to do it in relation to the joystick's position. At the same time the Arduino operates the signal for the reverse direction. When the Arduino circuit is connected to the ePulse it does not require any extra power supply because it is fed by the same power that normally feeds the throttle grip. To make the long story short, I can just replace the ePulse throttle grip one by one against the joystick control unit and back again. Whatever fits best to my actual ride. The grey plastic casing is a 3D printed two-piece design that can be bolted onto an Infento profile. The whole circuit fits nicely in there. The two handrests on both sides are optional. The mass driver cannon at the rear is also controlled by the joystick via a second Arduino. The black drive is a linear electric actuator with a potentiometer that allows a closed loop position control. It moves proportional to the stick movement and returns to its center position when the stick is released. This unit is meant to be used as a power steering for future rides. I am an electronic newbie, so I spent a couple of weeks soldering, programming and cousin, but finally it works. For the power supply of the linear servo there is a 24 volt connector for the ePulse battery on the right side and a counterpiece on the left side. Like this it is possible to put a second or even a third control box side by side that could control more functions like lamps, sound or even motors. My principal idea behind. I just put modules to the control panel that are needed for each ride. In case you're interested in the files for 3D printing or the sketches for the Arduino control, please drop me a line and I will make them available to you. So that's more all there is to it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Stay creative and I hope to see you next time.